I'm going to be completely honest. You know, when I first heard of the whole hormesis low dose x-ray being beneficial, I was like, like, no way. Like it's radiation. Come on. Right. But then you read into it more and then you think about it. You're like, wow, there's all these, but to think about it just because we're not used to thinking about radiation this way and to think about that it actually could actually give a beneficial effect it makes you step back and say hold on like i need to understand why this is interested in radiation exposure whether it's good whether it's bad whether it's necessary this video is for you please if you liked the video if you got value from it please hit the like button hit that little thumbs up it will help the video get to more people just like you who need to hear this information to get help. Subscribe to the channel for more videos. Make some comments in the comments section below. That helps the video as well. Ask me any questions. Ask us any questions that you might have. Uh, and we'll give you as much information as we possibly can. And, uh, and thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. Hey, welcome back everyone to the Chiropractic Deep Dive Podcast. Upper this is cervical. the Upper Cervical Chiropractic Show. This is episode number six. I'm Dr. Kevin Leach, and I am here once again with Dr. Tyler Evans. How are you, sir? Good to see you again, Kevin. All right, good to see you, my friend. So this episode's research review is titled, Subjecting Radiologic Imaging to the Linear No-Threshold Hypothesis, a Non-Sequitur of Non-Trivial Proportion by Jeffrey A. Siegel. Charles W. Pennington and Bill Sachs, and this is published in the Journal of Nuclear Medicine. Now, I did mm -hmm. want to say that this research is about radiation exposure, and it isn't necessarily about upper cervical chiropractic. However, since we use radiographic imaging to evaluate the upper cervical spine, this research can be applied to what we do. So, Dr. Evans, uh, Tyler, if you would, uh, just maybe give us, uh, give us your overview. Yeah, absolutely. This paper came across my desk a few years ago when I started to ask around about radiation dose and concerns for patients um, because we brought in a technology called cone beam CT, and that is a, uh, a, a type of radiological imaging that's slightly different from a, C, a standard CT scan and also slightly different from an X-ray series. Um, it's kind of a hybrid of the two. And I wanted to, uh, you know, make myself knowledgeable on dose if I was going to be using that technology and uh, be able to explain what the dose is and uh, how uh, it affects patients and if it's worth the cost to benefit ratio uh, to do that, that cone beam CT imaging. And in the upper cervical community, we, one of our standard procedures is to identify if there's an upper cervical misalignment and in three dimensions, whether that be by taking 2D x-rays and then creating a 3D image from different directions um, or by cone beam CT or MRI or CT, um, coming up with a way to correct the upper cervical spine specifically the, the best way possible for each and every patient. And so imaging is in our part of the profession it's what allows us to do our job. And in the craniocervical junction, you don't wanna be messing around up there. You want somebody to be able to see in, in, in you know, many different directions how that vertebra is rotated to get the pressure off of the brainstem, to allow fluid flow to come back, to allow the nerves to work as best as possible. So advanced imaging is, is you know, it's a, it's a daily part of our job. And, this cone beam CT technology is kind of a, a, an advancement in the, uh, in the world of dentistry, and we brought it into the chiropractic uh, world, and uh, I wanted to understand it. So this paper came across my desk, and, and it's a lot. There's a lot in this paper. It's a lot of 
uh, math. It's a lot of uh, new concepts for someone that's not really um, interested in, in dose or in radiation uh, health physics. But man, oh man, did it get fired, get me fired up and, and got me down the rabbit hole of, of this topic. Because there have been a few situations in the last 100 and yeah, the last 100 years that have created a global understanding of how radiation affects the human body. And some of them have been well studied. And over time, the, the science has actually changed a little bit because our science has gotten better. The data has gotten a little more clear because our science has gotten better. Because in the 1940s, you know, it's not fun to talk about this. I mean, these, these situations where, <clears throat> you know, it's like anything, when you do a study on humans, you don't want to be hurting people. Um, and so there's no way to get IRB board approval to do radiation dose to people and, and, uh, and, and see what happens. You know, it's not like they do that. But what we do is we observe what happened in real life to people that got uh, uh, exposed to large, large doses of radiation. So in 1945, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, um, they were two of the largest uh, population bases that were exposed to large doses of radiation. And um, at their epicenter, those areas were, were very highly afflicted. I mean, the, the, the mortality rate was very high. Um, but out on the ed edges of that, we had uh, low dose scenarios. So the further away someone was from the center of the blast, uh, there was this, this low dose scenario that uh, could be studied because these people survived and some of them are still alive today. Um, they're still producing. So what's called the lifespan study, um, in uh, Japan, that they are connected with the United States. And I, I just read a paper about this the other day. They're producing papers all the time. And every year they study these people, or every year or two, they study these people. They study their blood. They study, they study everything about them. And they study cancer rates. And what they've seen is that in some of these people, um, not only have they not had car cancer, uh, carcinogenic effects, or have they, they've actually had a protective effect against things like cancer. Um, you know, the, the, uh, some of the problems that arise that we, we thought would happen, uh, but it's not the science back then uh, when it first was studied, uh, it was kind of all come together and, and we just thought radiation is bad. But what we're starting to realize as we study these people through their whole life is that, uh, Radiation doesn't actually do at low doses what we thought that it does at high doses. And so this whole thing, I mean, this is a huge, long, drawn out explanation, but the, the whole thing comes down to this guy, Herman Joseph Mueller, in 1945, he's, he started a study where he studied fly, Drosophila flies, and he x-rayed he, yeah, he, he them. And he saw changes in the, these fly colors. So the, the uh, Drosophila fly uh, mutated genes and they saw changes in the colors. Well, what he didn't know and what, what the, the literature wasn't able to do was to reproduce that over time in a way that showed that low dose amounts under 100 millisieverts. So we're gonna talk about sieverts and millisieverts and microsieverts in just a second, but under 100 of these, these millisieverts, uh, there was no change. Uh, but he just assumed that there would be. So what they created was a, a chart that's called the linear no threshold. So linear, meaning a straight line, and no threshold under which it is safe to use radiation or that radiation is safe for the human body. So basically what they determined is that when you go this way with dose from zero to a thousand, and when you go up this way 
for risk for cancer zero to a thousand, every step you take, if you increase dose, you increase the risk of cancer over time. But that has never been found to be true, at least not with plausible, uh, repeatable research. Um, and they, I mean, they've got these huge lifespan studies. They've got it from, you know, the Hiroshima, Nagasaki. They've got it from other things like Chernobyl. Um, and now they're studying Fukushima. Uh, so <clears throat> unfortunately, radiological imaging gets thrown in this mix with nuclear energy and uh, nuclear weapons. And it's just not the same. We're not talking about the same amounts of, of dose. We're talking about fractions of fractions of dose comparatively. So <clears throat> when we look at like a daily dose, so the, the, we humans evolved in a, a low dose bath of radiation. We've had, we've had it and, and we needed the ozone and the electromagnetic uh, field to protect us and humans evolved in a time on the planet when we had that protection. However, we've always had a bit of that fr from the universe, from the stars in the sky, from the sun, from radon in the ground. We've always, bananas are, they have some radioactive uh, you know, element to them and the potassium. Uh, every, a lot of the elements have radioactivity. So what we've studied and found is that on a daily basis, you're going to get 10, roughly in the United States, you're going to get on average 10 microsieverts. You and I, you know, on a day from start to finish, we're going to get about 10 microsieverts. Over a year, we're going to get roughly 3 milli sieverts. So you take 10, multiply it by 365, what do you get? Roughly 3.65, you know, it depends on where you live. Now, if you live up high in Colorado, if you live in Pakistan in the mountains, there are actually a couple of places where that's actually like much higher, like 260 um, millisieverts for an annual dose versus the three that we get on average here in the United States. So there are places where they're getting even above the 100 millisieverts with no negative effects, at least that it can be studied and can be found. And they've studied them. Um, and th those are in this paper. So wh what this comes down to is we want to get the best result for our patients. Taking an x-ray is a very low dose scenario. We're talking if one lateral x-ray film and I can, I have the paper, it's called cervical and lumbar spine radiography dose, some, something to that effect. Um, I have it and we can do, go over that in the future, but um, it's roughly 10 millisieverts for a lateral x-ray and maybe 20 or 30 if you go through the, through the skull. Um, so we're talking and about- milli or micro sieverts? Sorry, micro, I apologize, my bad. So we're talking about roughly 50 to 100 micro sieverts for a cervical x-ray series in an upper cervical chiropractic office without any filters or uh, you know collimation, things like that, which you do. I know you do in your office. We do as well. Uh, and so the dose is very small. We're talking about a very, we're talking about fractions of fractions of fractions of anything that's ever caused uh, a, a negative problem. Now that's not to say that there's no risk. There's always a When you hop in your car and you drive to work every day, there is a risk of you getting into an accident. It's very small, but we're all, we all take that risk every day. And so when it comes to taking x-rays and seeing the problems in the, cer the cervical spine or in the spine, this risk is, it's tiny. It is magnificently small. And the benefit that you can get of having a clear brainstem, a clear nervous system, it is outweighs that risk, in my opinion, clinically, you know, from what I've seen. So that's a long well, that's what the paper is saying winded, too. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah. I mean that's their whole. I mean these, you know, this with just to make it clear, these these guys, these. Uh, um, Nuclear physicists nuclear may not even physicists. know about upper cervical, but they're nope. still 
they're still they're still advocating the fact that this theory, this hypothesis that doesn't right. that's never been shown below the hundred millisieverts, that it's never been shown to be true, should not be taken into consideration for the Alara, right? The as low as reasonable uh, it's reasonably achievable meaning yep. meaning that a lot of meaning that health care has these directives on you try to use as much as low as possible to get your imaging well that tends to lead to not exposing the patient enough to get quality information which could, or not at all or not at all. Exactly. Saying, oh no, let's 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 bypass that, right? So they're it's saying not, the it's risk. Not evidence, it's not evidence-based. Right. Right. So the conclusion is, is that this policy by Bear, B E I R. Yep. Beer. Bear, yep. Bear, Bear, that that you should do as little as possible is not it's more dangerous to do that because of missing something on imaging or getting quality in imaging than it is to to not do it because of a false hypothesis that's never been proven that that low dose uh, radiation has negative effects which again has never been shown and a lot of studies actually show that there could be potential benefit to it correct uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna be completely honest you know when i first heard of the whole hormesis low dose x-ray being beneficial i was like bah. like no way like it's radiation come on right but then you read into it more and then you think about it you're like wow there's all these analogies that you can think of okay so if i if i don't drink enough water not good if i drink plenty of water good if i drink too much water i could actually die so there's a threshold of how much water same thing when you go out and you get some sun. You need some sun for vitamin D. You get too much and you burn, you could get skin cancer, right? There's all, these, there's all these analogies that you can come by, but to think about it, just because we're not used to thinking about radiation this way, and to think about that it actually could actually give a beneficial effect, it makes you step back and say, hold on, like, I need to understand why this is. So yeah. it's, and it's interesting is to think about. Yeah, and hormesis is the concept there that we're talking about that, you know, when a x-ray, uh, an electron comes into a cell, uh, that it, it may uh, go through the DNA and change or alter a DNA uh, sequence. The, the reality is that's happening all the time from the sun, the stars, from the, the radon in the ground, from the interactions that we have with the chemicals in our environment. And this idea, it's, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a slippery slope where, okay, we, you know, we don't want any rate. Okay. We'll go live in a box under a ground for the rest of your life and get, and there's still radiation that goes through the ground. If you live in a cave, there's still some radiation that comes through. So, you know, there's a, uh, there's a, a fine line where yes, there's, there's an important relationship there, but, under 100 millisieverts, uh, you know, it's just not been observed. And there may be, we need to study it more, but there may be a protective factor called hormesis. And, uh, and, and that, uh, that might actually be a good thing. For, for uh, the first, uh, you know, few 20 or, or 30 years of uh, x-ray, they, they used to actually, medical offices used to actually offer x-rays for therapeutic benefit. And that's what this, so these nuclear physicists, um, some of these health physicists, what they actually do, they use radiation to help the body. Chemotherapy has been shown in low doses to actually support uh, healing, right? Obviously in high doses, it kills cells and it's not good, but in low doses, it has been shown to, to help uh, cell regeneration, cell regrowth. So, uh, yeah, there's just, there's protective factors there that it's a nuanced conversation and you can't just say blanket statement. Oh, can't do that. It's, it's bad. That, that's not what the science says, you know, and this is, this is all stuff that 
you know, back in the, the early days, we didn't have the ability to do this science, to study this. Now we do. Here's the data. You know, we need to change our, our perceptions. Will you go into the, 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 what is it? The bear, the beer, bear? Yeah, beer seven. Yeah. The beer, no. the beer committee. Um, and then the, the Alara and the possible financial, uh, you know, ties to that. Uh, or do you want me to go over that? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I'm just looking here, um, you know, the, the beer seven. So what, so beer, the biological, uh, what is it? Biological effects of ionizing radiation. They've been doing this since World War II. Since the bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that's where beer came from. Uh, it was, I believe it's the United States under the uh, Academy of Sciences. So the Academy of Sciences is like our um, WHO in the United States, and they work under a similar concept as the World Health Organization. They're, they're putting, uh, you know, government dollars towards science, right? And so they're trying to study things that scientists in one little lab can't study, right? Um, and so this Beer 7 is the seventh time they have recollected data, studied it, and then came out with their five, I believe the report is something like 500 or a thousand pages. And unfortunately I have read through it before. Um, it's painful, <laughs> but it's good. And it's got some good stuff in it. And actually there are some places in, and this paper doesn't, um, maybe it does show uh, where, but it's, it's uh, lost in here to me, but um, there are places where beer seven does say, Hey, some of the new data from the lifespan study is suggesting that there may be a protective factor. There may be, uh, there, there might not be good grounds for this linear note threshold, but right now we don't have enough information and we want to continue to go off of this old theory, this hypothesis that Herman Joseph Mueller created in 1945. Um, and just stay with it because they are worried. I mean, that obviously they're taking into account the world's radiation protection standards. And, and that's where we get our radiation protection standards for all of our health safety workers, for, you know, all of our, our doctors and our, and our medical offices of every nuclear plants, everybody follows these rules based on these people. So they're trying to be conservative. And I get that. Um, but Alara, right? So this Alara concept, it comes in and, uh, you know, it comes into play where that might actually reduce the ability of a doctor to get helpful information uh, where the, the data doesn't show that you shouldn't. Um, so if you want to go into some of the, the more details on that, please, please go ahead. Because I, you know, I, I see what you're no, pointing at there. That's pretty much the basics of what I wanted to cover. Um, so where do you think, you know, when patients come in, I'm, I'm sure you've had them as well, and they'll ask, hey, do you have to do x-rays? Can we do this without x-rays? And I say, unfortunately not. They're absolutely essential. Uh, right. And even before this paper, I would say the benefits greatly outweigh the, the, the risk. risk from the, the very low dose of x-rays that you're getting. Where, do, mm -hmm. where are patients getting their information from in regards to radiation well, bad um well that's a little bit of a rabbit hole and i'll i'll just i'll Overview. step my toes i'll step my toes into the pond All right. um because this is something i go deep into the rabbit hole on late into the night sometimes um so it, it goes back to uh, you know Herman Joseph Mueller, but then what happened was in the 1950s and 60s, uh, actually Sierra Club and and I was a, a major supporter for Sierra Club for a long time, and this gets into a bunch of other stuff. But Sierra Club decided they wanted to take down nuclear power and they wanted to destroy it and never have it surface again on the planet. Um, so they created some propaganda uh, and said things that were not scientific about nuclear power and the, the, um, the nuclear power industry did not have the, the, the science on what their 
uh, plants we're producing in terms of community and regions. Um, and that's been shown to all, it's all been laid out. There's a couple of guys that do TED, one of my favorite guys, that does, he does a TED talk, uh, Michael, uh, I forget his last name. He ran for uh, governor of California a couple of years back, um, but he had a big stance on nuclear power. He's trying to bring nuclear power back um, because our fears are unwarranted. Uh, there, there's just, in the United States, there's never been a death from nuclear energy from fallout. Um, just hasn't. And so there's all these kind of propaganda situations that have happened to close out nuclear energy. Obviously, nuclear weapons are not good. Nuclear deterrent is, is important uh, for you know, fending our country. However, the nuclear arms race in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s was a terrible thing. And obviously, we need to, to stop that. So the, the nuclear weapons part of it gets wrapped up into it. And people see these explosions of the nuclear weapons, and they think you know, you see those big mushroom clouds and, and they think that's, they think that's the same thing and it's not. And there have been movies like uh, the China syndrome. Uh, th this, this happened in the fifties and sixties from, uh, or actually it came out in the seventies, but it was, this was the Sierra Club's move to destroy nuclear energy in California. And uh, it was done by a bunch of actors that, um, that were part of the, the remove nuclear industry uh, movement. And, they literally made a movie that said, and it's actually kind of not, it's, it's not cool, but they said that, you know, this nuclear power plant in California literally burnt a hole through the center of the earth because it melted down and melted through to China. That's why it's called the China syndrome. False. If you put a hole through the earth, it doesn't go to China. I'm sorry, from, from California, it doesn't go to China. Um, so, you know, there's just been a lot of like false science. It's fake science. It's not real. It's never been proven um, in that way, in that shape of, or form, you know. And so there's just this constant propaganda. And yes, people are afraid of the, the serious effects of nuclear weapons and blame that on the government. Don't blame that on, you know, Einstein and the people that created the nuclear energy movement in the beginning um, and, and the people that use nuclear uh, medicine or the people that use radiation uh, techniques to get imaging. Uh, there's a lot of good science that has come about because of that technology. I mean, most of the advances that we've had in the, in the last hundred years have come from the ability to split atoms and develop this energy into useful forms. And if you wanna throw that away, that's, that's gonna really hurt our society and set us back technologically speaking. I mean, this is a, this is a podium I'll get up on and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about all day long because I get excited about it, but there's just been so much propaganda that's not, it's fake science that, that you know, radiological imaging's bad and, and you know, that yeah. some of these, these ideas are, 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 they're just not true. So the, the short answer to my question, I would, you, would say, you would say that patients know that x-rays have radiation. They yes. think about radiation from a nuclear bomb. Yes. They think about nuclear energy um, and Fukushima, and they yep. think bad, and they just correlate Chernobyl. both of them as being bad. Right. Pretty much, right? right? Yeah. Got it. Bad. You know, Got you it. see that big yellow and black symbol and bad, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like fear, fear, yeah. fear. It's called yeah, radiophobia. Sure. It's called radiophobia. Um, we never explained the non sequitur. Oh, yeah. So non sequitur, I, I love that. I, I actually love the title of this paper because it's witty and it's intelligent. Uh, <laughs> but a non sequitur is a conclusion or statement that does not logically follow from the previous argument or statement, meaning um, that the linear non threshold hypothesis is a hypothesis and there's no science or data to back it up. So that it, it doesn't logically follow, right? Like, doesn't make sense. Circular reasoning. Yes. Yes. Coming to a conclusion based off of separate evidence without empirical data to, to prove it. It's a fun Got title. It. I like it. <laughs> Got it. All right, my man. Anything else? Any other highlighted points? Conclusions? 
Mm. No, I mean, I, I think that pretty much covers it. I'll, I'll definitely step off of the. No, the it's talking. It, it's fine. This is supposed to be a conversation, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so we can, you know, for the, you know, patients watching this, doctors watching this, you know, they're thinking about radiation. Uh, we, they need to understand that radiation when in healthcare in, in low, low doses yeah. are, are, are non-harming. That's what the evidence is showing, that there's yep. no harm and that there's actually potential benefit. Now, we're not going to be doing it for the benefit, but no. to not be afraid of doing imaging when indicated. Correct. Right. There's and the, the, it's, 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 there's this movement in, in chiropractic to say that, uh, you know, it's not evidence-based to shoot x-rays on neck pain or low back pain. Um, there are many patients. I, I have taken cone beam CTs on people that come in and they don't have an atlas. There's no bone there. It's just cartilage in the spinal cord. Right. If I didn't know that going in, that's not good. Exactly. That's a great way to get a, a malpractice lawsuit. Exactly. You know, like, come on. Yeah. You know, so, so not and, only is this not harmful, it's extremely beneficial to know exactly what we're working with and we're adjusting and also to indicate if there's anything else that needs to be referred out to a medical doctor, oncologist, neurologist, anything like that. Right. Correct. So the, the, the conclusion for this paper and the evidence is that imaging is okay and absolutely necessary when indicated. Yes. It's safe. When indicated after obviously a series of tests to indicate and confirm, yes, there's a misalignment. We should investigate it further. You're a good candidate for care. Now let's move forward with x-rays. We don't just go in and x-ray people first thing. We do testing. We, we rule in or out the idea that, yeah, there might be a misalignment that's affecting uh, your body in a way that we think we can help with. Let's move forward with some imaging. It's safe, Perfect. right? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Anything else, my good man? No, I think that's it. That's a good one. I love, awesome. I like that paper. It's a good one. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time, Tyler. Appreciate it. As, uh, as usual, viewers, listeners, like, subscribe, comment, please. It really helps out the videos. It helps us get our message out. It helps us help more people like you. So please, if you found some value, uh, support us in that way, uh, if you can. And uh, until next time, we will see you. Uh, we will see you then. Yes, Take we care. Will. See Take ya. care.